day that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and those who torment the righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to another episode of Deep Waters, Deep Hearts. My name is Odeni Hamatai, T.Y. Tunamis. Uh, Deep Waters, Deep Hearts is a platform designed towards encouraging spiritual growth in the lives of participants, creating a passion for the kingdom and the things of God in general, thereby fostering an understanding and insight of global issues, global challenges, and how they can be solved in God's way, in Godly perspectives. So we have three major segments in Deep Waters. We have the quiz competition, we have um, the Bible presentation, and we have a discussion forum. So on this episode, we're going to be having a discussion forum on a very interesting topic, which um, is being titled The Missing Day in the book of Joshua, chapter 10 precisely. Um, before I introduce my um, speakers, our speakers um, for this episode, I would just like to go through a brief introduction of this very topic. In Joshua chapter 10, it was reported that there was um, a little of town, Gibeon. They, I mean, they were friends. They became friends with Joshua, the people of Israel. So there were these five Hamorite kings, I mean, out of envy, out of jealousy, they decided to fight Gibeon. So the men of Gibeon had to call for Joshua. Said, Joshua, come and help us. This and that, and Joshua had to come travel from Giga, where they are camped, to Gibeon overnight. And he made a declaration there where the scientists say it's not possible. It is said it's not possible. And even in the hearts of believers, there had been different kinds of questions that have emerged. Is it really possible that some will stand still and more will stand still? And um, it's, it's against um, science. But today we are going to be looking at what had those things that could have likely happened. Look at the command of Joshua, the nature of the command. Was he trying to say it because he wanted to prove the power of God to the people? Was he just trying to say it because he wanted a relief from the scorching heat of the sun? Everything is going to be discussed here in the next few minutes. So I would like to introduce our speakers for today. This is Gaius Eze from Pretoria University, um, UNISA students. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. And we have Pastor Benjamin Hector Prope from um, Rodin Port. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. And we have Aindeolua Damilari. You're also welcome, sir. He's also a student of UNISA. So, sir, we have an interesting topic mm. I mean, before us today. Yeah, and, um, yeah, <laughs> I know we have really gone through this very chapter. But if you have a Bible to talk, let us open to Joshua chapter 10. I think we're reading Joshua chapter 10. And uh, verse 12. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Hamorites. I'm reading from the hand healthy version. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Hamorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. Verse 13. So the sun stood still, and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. In this event, not recorded in the book of Joshua, the sun stayed in the middle of the sky, and it did not set as on a normal day. Then verse 14, the last verse. There has never been a day like this, one before or since when the Lord answered such a prayer. Surely, the Lord fought for Israel that day. I want to start, the first discussion now is this. Um, what brought about this, um, this declaration? Is it a declaration? Is it a command? Is it a prayer? We're going to establish that later. But what brought about this? How did he ever think that sun will stand still, moon will stand still. What was it thinking? And let me start from you guys. <laughs> well, it, it, it really shows um, the understanding of who Joshua have come to know his God. You know, he, the, the olden days, there was no technology to show how great God is. You know, but Joshua was someone who has experienced God. Let's not forget, he was the man who wrote how the earth was created. That is Moses. I mean, Moses was able to give us uh, eternity past. 
Did you get it? When I say eternity past, the creation, Genesis, Exodus, he was right there with, with, uh, with Moses. So I think Moses was able to rub off on him who and how big God is. He didn't need size. Did you get it? So now when it, 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 there, there was a desperate measure, he needed something needed to be done. You know, this is victory that needs to be won. But now the sun is going down. We are going to be victims of this. I, I, I don't know, but he just felt that, hey, this God is that big. And if that, this God is that big, remember in that same book, he said, God, God created us like him. So he knew he was a small God. And the son is a creature. Did you get it? And he had power over the creature. So he knew he understands his, 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 uh, his strength over the creations. Okay, um, uh, if I would get you right now, you are trying to say that he made that declaration because he knew who he knew who he is. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Fine. Mm -hmm. But what what led to that? Because you no, know, some commentators said probably he made that uh, declaration because he was trying to I mean get a relief from the scorching heat of the sun. Mm -hmm. so because mm -hmm. he they traveled from Giga yeah. to Gibeon, yeah. and um, from Bible history, Bible history showed that from Giga to Gibeon. 20 miles mm -hmm. and yeah. it's 20 it's 17 hours and they climbed yeah. up they climbed and they climbed up, up. yeah they climbed up it's yeah. the it's that, journey that yeah. means and they, they moved all night yeah yeah throughout the night so why did he make that declaration sir <laughs> yeah, i believe that because uh, if you look at verse 8 um, mm. already god promised joshua that he must not fear uh, for god mm. has delivered he, them unto him uh, into his hand and um, when you go and God has commanded you whatever you do that is in the will of God is blessed, blessed. blessed. so he was speaking and uh, he needed time and uh, it goes to show that God uh, when we are going with him even when we were not fast enough he is able to make up time whether you live your life and maybe your friends have passed you you know, sometimes you look around and then you say, hey, uh, Gaius has gone to be like this, he has gone to university, me, what is happening with me, he has married, he has got kids and what, what. But uh, it goes to show that uh, God really is not limited by time. Mm. Yeah, uh, he is eternal, he is from eternal, from before time to after time. And uh, he was able to actually manipulate the parameter. Remember that it's God who instituted in the covenant of Noah, uh, sun and the rising of the sun and the going down of the sun. It is him who is also able to manipulate that and stop it uh, according to what he wants. And I believe that Joshua knew that in the covenant of Noah, God said from now on, Seed time and harvest will never cease. Day and night will never cease. Therefore, having the same authority that God has given him, going through the, the word that God said, fear not in verse 8, he applies the very same word that said, seed time, harvest will never cease. Well, well, sir, in that verse 8, if you look at it, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not. Now, he said, For I have delivered. He said, I am going to deliver. Now, if he says, I, am, I, I have delivered. Now, I still have the, the, the assistant, you know, to say that we serve a God who is not just jealous, but he shows off. You know, when I say shows off, he brags about himself. Mm -hmm. I still believe that even if, see, even if the sun had gone, it was night, yeah. they were still going to conquer these guys. They were still going to conquer. But because we have a God that brags, you know, he's God. So he wants to show off that, say, I mean, I, I made the universe and I can control it. Yeah, I, can I mean, control it. but go, going by uh, the description we have uh, in verse 11, mm. which says, As they fled before Israel, while they were going down ascent of Bethlehem, mm. the Lord threw large stones from heaven mm -hmm. on them as far as Azekah. Mm -hmm. That means. The, uh, the Lord didn't just throw these guys in panic. He threw hailstones. Mm -hmm. Hailstones. Mm -hmm. And with hailstones comes, you know, your sandstorms. Mm -hmm. People won't be able to see what is right in front of them. I think that is why Joshua had to make this command and say, okay, you know, in those days, when they go to war, they don't go to war and take spoils. They go to war, they destroy everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, for these guys not to escape, Joshua needed light. Mm -hmm. 
in the that Netherlands. Why. Yeah. yeah. So you are trying to say that it was because he never wanted them to escape, yeah. not yes. because he was thinking if it gets dark, those people could actually retaliate. No. No. They were on the no. own already. From, yeah. They were smoothing from. No, the, but but let, let's look at let's look at something from from eleven. That's in eleven. Yeah. Is it not said that I mean, if the hailstone fell, then I to me I felt the, the battle was already won already because it says let, let's look at it. It says. Um, um, but he said, and the Lord cast down great stones, and did, and from uh, great stones from heaven upon them, unto Ezekiah, and they died. You see, he said they were more which died with hailstones yeah. than they would with children of Israel have slain. Yeah. So the people that were left to be killed with the sword, we are very few. They were very few. So I think the battle was already won. And the question now is, if okay, if we, if we continue from verse twelve, yeah. See, on the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, yeah. this scripture is trying to like, it's like, uh, we really don't know when they yeah. made that declaration. Yeah. Was it before? Yeah. During? Or after the No, not 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 after now. Is it before or, or during? Or during the, the, during the battle? Yeah, I I believe that also we, we must just uh, be aware that the Bible is not written strictly in chronological exactly. order yes, that this is the timeline how it happened mm -hmm. so the storyline may go like this but the timeline may not actually be but the bible still mentions clearly that it was on that day, on that day. meaning that if it was on that day that day was longer than usual mm -hmm. uh, how long it it, it was uh, you see that uh, the bible mentioned that it was twice as long the whole day mm -hmm. the sun stood still mm -hmm. so most probably even for God to finish his work and for Israel to see because most of the time you may, you'll see in the Bible God when he fights for his people he says you will stand and you will watch yeah Remember? so they needed the daylight to see this thing and watch yeah but watch. shouldn't we consider the fact that you know uh, statements like this could be of the poetic nuance mm -hmm. whereby you are reading a story and say uh, the sun stands still yeah. Couldn't it be uh, like I, I think, a, a form um, of poets? You know what? No. We have to take a break now. So when we get back, we are going to um, continue from this. Um, yeah, yeah. You are taking us to another realm now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bias Atom, I hope you've had a nice time so far with us. We need to take a break now. And um, when we are back, we'll continue with this topic, this very interesting topic, the missing day in the time of Joshua. Thank you very much. The soldier prayed what is perhaps the most bizarre prayer in all of the Bible. The soldier was Joshua. His prayer, the Bible says, is one that stopped the sun and the moon in the sky. It's a story most Christians say they really believe happened, but that most scientists would say never could have happened. There's a theory, however, that suggests the story could very well have happened exactly as it's described in the Bible. According to the theory, our problem is that we haven't been reading the whole story. We've been missing some of the important background. Here's what the Bible says happened. The Jews were conquering what is now Israel, taking back their homeland from settlers who had moved in while the Jews were enslaved in Egypt. They were camped in the Jordan River Valley when they got a messenger. Welcome back, Vios Atum. Um, it is still deep waters, deep hearts. We are looking at an amazing topic um, on this episode, the missing time, or the missing day, rather, mm -hmm. in the time of Joshua. So, so far so good, we've been on Joshua chapter 10, and um, our speakers have been doing good justice to that. So we'd like to continue now. If you're just joining us, get your sheet of paper and your pen, and you have to learn as we discuss. So, sir, before the break, you made mention of something. Yeah, I, I said uh, I, we could also look at it from uh, English language, whereby you are reading a piece of literature and then you see, you see, you know, all these people, they, they make use of their surroundings in such a way that you see the sky is so beautiful, it's great, the stars are aligned, so to, to, paint, to paint a more graphic uh, picture of the story itself. Could it be that uh, at this particular uh, verse exactly? Could it be that it could be a, a form of a poetic noise there? There, oh, you son, stay still while we you know, slaughter the the animals. 
Okay, I, I think now this is going to take us to um, a scientific theory now. Mm. Understand? And I want us to link both together. Now, yeah. um, if we have a good knowledge of geography, yeah. we know that the sun does not move. Mm-hmm. The earth rotates on its own axis, yes. and that gives us day and night. That's true. Then revolves around the sun. So yeah. as the earth is rotating on its own axis, it's revolving around the sun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's this um, thing that is common in the scriptures, this um, language of um, observation, kind of yeah. language of appearance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From this plane, this very plane uh, where, you, where we are on earth, we believe that the sun rises from the east mm-hmm. and sets so, where? Mm-hmm. On the west. So to a lame man, we could just say, okay, fine, the sun moves. So I was thinking that was how Joshua was understanding it. Then there was nothing like a scientific knowledge, I mean, mm-hmm. in quote. Maybe that was what is just, he wanted something to happen. He wanted the day to be prolonged. Do you understand? So he just thought, okay, the sun moves. See, it, since it rises and sets. And actually, it's like that. You get, so is it that, um, um, I, I want to ask now, linking both science and the poetic, which one is it likely to? Because there's really no um, evidence of um, Joshua being a poet. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, so it would have probably come from the perspective of poetry. Poetry. Hmm. But from a language of observation, what he yeah. observed? From what he knew that time, because I believe that uh, in as much as the science and uh, even the science changes mm-hmm. with new discoveries. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you studied uh, a grade zero, they told you that uh, zero minus one is impossible. And then you continue, then they tell you, oh, it's negative one. Mm-hmm. So it grows, and even with uh, the square root of uh, negative one, it's not possible. Mm-hmm. And then now they tell you that it's a complex number. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, really science is limited by what human beings know at that point in time. And God is not limited by even our observation or even our failure in observation. I can mention, take for instance, a person has got a heart disease and it is the heart disease that causes headaches, it causes the person to be uh, sick and all those type of things. I don't need to even know that the person has a heart disease. I'd say, in the name of Jesus, be healed of that uh, headache. What, what I want is the healing. What is the cause? Where it comes from? How it comes from? Where it okay. is? It is not my issue. It is the issue that God is gonna deal with by His finger when He points to that sickness. And, and Pastor, this is something that, that, that was profound in joshua's action mm. you know god actually looked at the spirit or the motive behind his his his, his command yeah. did you get it he, he looked at uh, what why have these guys said this? and let's not forget the psalm said for your name's sake though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death yet yet my point is at for your name's sake now you know god seated there in heaven and if he watches these guys being overcome by their enemies who is going to be shamed it's god did you get it? So some of the times uh, 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 we have to get out of our comfort zone and take God's word back to him. Remember, God has promised them. So he will do anything. Joshua, sure. yeah. yeah. Joshua, Joshua will do anything. And God looked at it. Oh, okay. I remember I told this guy. Did you get it? Yeah. And see, Joshua, Joshua caused the earth to be slower. Six, six, six thousand tri- tri- tritons of, 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 of water, you know. He, he made everything slow. Did you didn't get it? And it went for 24 hours, almost 24 hours. Yeah. Did you didn't get it? And God honored him. Now, let's not forget, even when uh, uh, God made the, uh, pro- made the children of Israel to go through light and the children of e- Egypt to go through darkness, did you didn't get it? Everything he did, he made it visible for there to be a witness. There, were, there needed to be a witness. Joshua said, Joshua made this declaration in the presence of everybody for there to be a witness of what he was going to do. Did you didn't get it? It's, it's such pro- pro- profound how when we operate in God's will, we can make declarations with boldness. And let's not forget, God was looking at the heart. Hmm. The heart of him, the motive behind it. You know? Actually, I, I see the majesty of God displayed in this very, very story. Because when Emily mentioned of a point, because you know, science is proved that, okay, indeed, sure, the story was true. But then I came up with... Um, um, something 
that they believe because the bible says for i think it was verse um, 13 mm. that was almost a thing mm -hmm. which means that this for the sun, for the head to rotate on its own axis a rotation in 24 um hours oh, yeah. then it made um, a rotation in almost 48 hours oh, okay. now if that is the case if that is the case then there's something could have should have happened in the history of mankind yeah i um sorry to uh continue no, no problem. Just yeah this uh this particular session is uh when i was doing uh, research and it was interesting because this uh story came up uh, originated from a man named uh Arod hill uh it was stated that uh they were trying to determine how old the head is mm. and they went by bible school medical record. and then they said uh, he postulated that uh, the day the first day in creation was a sunday september 22 he, they did the calculation so they 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 he gathered together a team put them in the research facility and they did all their statistics and numbers and everything and then they started uh, the machine automatically calculates mm -hmm. so when they got to a particular point uh, there was it's 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 froze yeah so yeah. they got technicians to check up on from and the technicians were like there's nothing wrong with this and by the time they checked they discovered that there was a day missing so i i think the man had uh, the man is a christian from all accounts that i've seen him. so they went by the biblical knowledge which pointed them to mm -hmm. uh, joshua's missing day yeah. but if we uh if we were to research joshua's missing day but well, it's not exactly 24, 24 hours, hours. Yeah. No, it, 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 it was 20, it is 23 hours 20 minutes. minutes yeah so they are they, they are they are left with the dilemma where is the other 40, yes, 40 minutes? minutes so they had to go to Ezekiel when when he was about to die and then the prophets came and said the lord has added 15 years to so he said uh, prove to me that what you are saying is indeed true <laughs> so and the prophet was like would you want the son to to you know, go, to go ahead, then he said, I want to go ahead. Say, ah, the sun can always go ahead. It <laughs> says, and is it easy? You know? <laughs> I want the sun to come back to come 10 back. degrees. And George, based on that time, that 10 degrees is equivalent to uh, 14, 14, 14 minutes. Minutes. So that's how they came up with the mm. missing day calculation. Mm. Mm. But uh, where this story took a twist is uh, the people that read this research, they wrote to NASA and then they said, okay. We read about this Aaron here. They carried out this research on the missing day. Can you confirm? And then NASA wrote back to them and said, "You know nothing about this. You don't know anything." I, I think where the problem, before. where the problem is, is that um, from another um, journal, it was written that Aaron E did not um, keep the document. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So along the line, it was misplaced. Mm -hmm. just, just the same way, just the same way in the, the book of Joshua Jasha, here. Yeah. Because nobody, nobody it was from the book of it, it, Joshua, this story was yeah, coined out from. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and Bible used to show that the book of Joshua has been lost. It's even a music book. It's a music book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, so uh, it, it contained the um, the songs and um, yeah. I think about the legend yeah. of the legends of um, the heroes of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. So in one way or the other, I I I, I really want to this a, a kind of light. That needs to, that needs a light in this very story mm. about the Harold mm. Elite you talked about. Mm. about it. Because if we were to look at it even on a neutral level, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, almost yeah. a day and then 10 degrees. Mm. You know, and, and the Bible is so complete that if, if uh, it has ended at 23 hours and uh, 20 minutes, you know, even these atheists will have reasons to start complaining about you know, the, the, the Bible is so complete so that there is a place to go find the remaining 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. You get it? There's a place to go find. This is where the remaining 40 minutes is. You know, it's true that some people definitely will not agree to this. NASA did not agree to this. You know that? Ah, ah that's not true. They call it a hot <laughs> <laughs> and, and Actually, and then I, I'm, I'm looking at something. Many people do not really uh, believe this Joshua chapter 10. What they mm. believe that of Ezekiah. Yeah, second case. Yeah. Yeah. And now, that of Ezekiah cannot come to pass. Mm. Cannot yeah. be possible without... Well, you know, uh, 
this point you mentioned now, I think uh, the problem people have believing this story is because lack of biblical, other biblical references. You get, you know, every story in the Bible has a reference from other places. <laughs> in this, we, we, we actually don't have another reference from this Joshua story anywhere else in the Bible. But, but if you look, already the Bible tells us, is it not in the, the book, book of Joshua? And but now we can't find Joshua. Joshua, because Joshua is lost. Yeah. There are other books. There are other books apart from uh, uh, the books that are in the, the canon of the canon. scriptures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you even recall that even Apostle Paul, he quoted from, uh, though he didn't quote from the Apocrypha, he mm-hmm. quoted even from a secular writer. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so there are other books, and uh, I mean that actually even just speaks about how the canon of the scripture came mm-hmm. about, so that the the, the the circulation of many scriptures. Was just too many, and uh, I think that but, uh, uh, I'm sorry to cut you short, Pastor. Mm-hmm. But you know, in the book of Psalm 136, mm-hmm. where uh, it was numerics uh, works that the Lord did, mm-hmm. was greatly mentioned. Don't you feel this is supposed to be there? would have been mentioned you know? about that? As because here it was clear like there was no day anywhere else yeah. as this before day. This or after. Or after. after. So, you, 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 know, you know, you know. Before we go, you know, before uh, um, whenever God does something, if you check the, when, especially when it's been said, there is no day before or after. When the Lord destroyed the world with rain, it hasn't happened. Yeah, you get it. So some things are just a once of thing. And he said it will never happen again. It will never happen again. Yeah. I would rather destroy with fire. <laughs> we really have to, to hey. continue next week. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. Yeah. Okay. Viewers at home, uh, this is, like I said, uh, and I hope you've really gotten one or two things ready. Um, we have to continue next week. Uh, we have to bring our speakers back here next week to continue and eat a target on this very, very story. So, have a wonderful time. Same time, same station. Bye bye.